Hello everyone, my name is Hannah Kleinheider and I'm a cybersecurity researcher at Idaho National Laboratory. Today, I'm going to explain how to use Malcolm for threat hunting, specifically how to use Archimedes SpyView and SpyGraph. The very first thing you'll want to do is make sure you have Malcolm installed. That's not covered in this video, but there is plenty of documentation available on the GitHub page. So if you go to Idaho Lab and then Malcolm, you can read more about that there. Once you have Malcolm installed, you'll want to upload files to examine. What I'm using for this video is some PCAPs that I obtained here. You can just download them and they're all already in PCAP format, which is good. Archimede does have some trouble with PCAP and G files. So if you have something you'd like to look at that's PCAP and G, just convert it to PCAP. Just select the files that you'd like to upload and analyze and then add them. You can add tags for the files so you can find them later and search on them instead of anything else you have uploaded. And then you can select what types of files you'd like to extract with Zeek. You might want to be careful with this, but in my case, I'll just select all files. Then just upload. You can check the files tab to make sure that all of the files have been uploaded. And then in order to look at it, you can go to the SpyView and SpyGraph tabs, which we're gonna be looking at today. The SpyView and SpyGraph tabs are session profile information. So that's just a bunch of metadata about the network traffic that you'll be able to see. And if you'd like, go to um, the more information here in Archimy so you can read a little bit more about that. This is the spy view. You can see that the time range is set to a couple of days at the end of February and the beginning of March. So I did that because that's when the PCAP traffic is timestamped. So I just know the data that I'm interested in and uh, set the time range accordingly. If you have a longer period of time you're looking at, you may look at it in segments or you may look over the more recent um, network traffic. So it all depends on what you're looking for. So as you can see here, there is kind of an overall graph of the traffic. There's also a list of a lot of different destination and source IPs and protocols. You can get an idea of what subnets are present and which hosts are active, which ones are communicating a lot versus maybe which ones are communicating a little. Um, there's some different protocols represented here, obviously there are a lot of different protocols that you might not usually see. So depending on your environment, you should be able to get an idea of what is normal versus what might be anomalous or unusual. So one of the cool things you can do is you can search for a specific protocol and filter based on that. And then with that, you can see which uh, hosts are communicating using that protocol. So you can see these are the source and destination IPs that are involved in this traffic. And then you can filter further based on those to see um, what they're communicating with. So for instance, this source IP is using the S7COM protocol. And then with that, it's communicating to this destination IP. So that's not very much traffic. You could also remove this other filter based on protocol and see if it's communicating with any other um, destinations based on a different protocol. So, blah. So you can see if it's communicating using any other protocols with any other hosts. So that's interesting. There's some VNC and that might be interesting because if there's remote connections to something that could be anomalous. There's also RDP and um, a few other things. So you might wanna just investigate this more if you're actually doing some threat hunting. In this case, it's all test data, so it's not particularly realistic, but those are some things you might be interested in. And you see a little bit of a graph here, but you can also see more information in the spy graph tab. You can see like the different protocols all split out. So you could see, okay, this is S7COM, but it also does a ton of UDP and BACnet. And then, oh, there's some interesting HTTP later. Um, and 
yeah, the VNC was also later, but the RDP kind of coincides around the same time or right before the um, S7 comp. So that's interesting. Um, and this is just a way that you can visualize the data that you are interested in and see more about it and then start making those connections of what's happening and when it's happening and then get a better understanding of your network. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at malcolm at inl.gov.